And this is how the Lord preserved the Vedas from one Manvantra to another. So if he's going to make an arrangement like that, even when all the earthly planets are devastated, don't you think he's going to make some arrangement to save his Vedic culture and his devotees during this tiny, small devastation between two, two chakras of a yuga? Huh? This is nothing. It's nothing compared to the devastation at the end of the Manvantara. There's nothing compared with the devastation at the end of the Kali Yuga, when Satya Yuga has to be established again. No? It's nothing compared with the devastation at the battle after the battle of Kurukshetra, when the whole Vedic civilization collapsed all over the world, leaving all of its colonies like the Mayans and Aztecs here in South America and the Native Americans up north uh, and Egypt and all these the European countries, uh, they all got cut off. They all lost their leaders, they all lost their economies, they lost their technology, they lost everything. The huge, huge uh, devastation at the end of, when Krishna left this planet 5,000 years ago at the end of Dwapara Yuga. So this devastation that we're facing is actually a very small one by comparison with other devastations that have taken place. Yet, through all those devastations, the Vedic culture has always emerged unscathed. Huh? So, if we carry this culture into the next part of this yuga, don't you think that Krishna is going to protect us? Huh? So, right now, his protecting us is in the form of inspiring us with intelligence, how to analyze how to uh, fund our project. Uh, we're just a couple of weeks away from having a software tool that can literally raise any amount of money that, that you could imagine. We're going to have to, in fact, we're going to have to throttle it. We're going to have to hold it back so that it doesn't attract too much attention. Uh, if we started raising trillions of dollars, I think we might get a little bit of uh, the wrong kind of attention. <laughs> so we'll have, we're going to have to hold it back. I'm not boasting. I'm just telling you what we're doing, okay? Krishna, if he wants, Prabhupada said this on more than one occasion, if Krishna wants, he can give us the whole world. Try to understand. This is Krishna's world. This is Krishna's planet. All the people are Krishna's people. All the funds and all the properties and all the resources are all Krishna's. If Krishna wants, he can give everyone their share. And if Krishna doesn't want, then nobody will have anything. Try to understand. One time Prabhupada said, if I had five men of the quality of Yudhishthir, I could take over this planet in 18 days. One time, I posted this story this morning, but I'll tell it again. One time after the battle of Kurukshetra, Yudhishthir, King Yudhishthir was now the emperor of the whole world. So, but he wanted to perform the Rajasuya sacrifice. The Rajasuya is a sacrifice where a king declares himself the emperor of the world. Uh, and anybody that does not agree, then he has to conquer them. And they have to pay tribute. So the, the procedure is that the king uh, lets go what's called a challenge horse in each of the four directions. A horse can wander anywhere that it wants. And if it wanders into another king's territory, the king has to pay the tribute to the emperor. If not, he can capture the challenge horse. And then there's a, a battle. And whoever wins the battle, then they get the control of that kingdom. See, these guys are playing for keeps. Huh? They're not fooling around. 
So they released these four challenge horses, and Yudhishthira's four brothers went along with the challenge horses with their armies in all four directions. And they conquered all of the territories. Anybody that gave any resistance, they just smashed them. So when the horses then were brought back along with all the tributes, huh, they counted up all the gold and all the things, but there still was not enough gold to perform the Rajasuya sacrifice. This is described in Mahabharata, this history. So Yudhisthira, in great anxiety, went to Krishna. And he said, Krishna, what am I going to do? I'm supposed to be the emperor of the world, but the, the whole world has become devastated because of the battle of Kurukshetra. And there's not enough wealth to perform the, the Rajasuya sacrifice. You see, in the Rajasuya sacrifice, what they had to do was, first of all, they picked this level place, plain, and then they plow the whole thing, huh? and then purify it with mantras. And then a great stadium is built, huh? like similar to like a football stadium or something like that today. Great stadium, and then all the people and all the kings and everyone is invited from the whole kingdom come and then there's this, this enormous sacrificial arena where there are hundreds of brahmanas engaged in offering sacrifices and chanting mantras and like that. I'll take care of these guys. Please. So when uh, the sacrifice is performed, many, many tons of gold are offered to the Lord in the sacrificial fire and then distributed among the people who come there. Uh, if you can't satisfy everyone with gifts of gold and jewels and stuff like that, then the f sacrifice is a failure. So Yudhishthira wanted to acquire enough gold to perform the Rajasuya sacrifice successfully. And he wanted to make Krishna the deity of the sacrifice, the first one who is worshipped in the sacrifice. So Krishna, of course, was, was very pleased with Yudhishthira because he arranged for Yudhishthira to be placed on the throne. So he said, oh, Yudhishthira, this is no problem at all. In the Himalayas, there is a golden mountain. And then he, he told the history of this mountain. And uh, actually, I forget the details, but somehow or other, there was a golden mountain from millions and millions of years before some incident happened between a fight between two different planets or something like this. And this golden mountain, maybe it was an asteroid or something like, who knows. This became, this was uh, placed or hidden in the Himalayas. And of course now it's all covered over with dirt and rocks and dust and nobody can see that it's actually a golden mountain. So Krishna told Yudhishthira, you go to this certain place and you'll find this golden mount, a mountain of gold. Just try to understand how much gold there is in a mountain, right? So, um, try to understand all of the world's, or how much of the world's wealth is tied up in the stock market. Uh, it's trillions and trillions of dollars. Huh? It's probably, what's more than a, the, the a thousand trillion, is a quadrillion. Huh? I mean, it starts to get so vast that the numbers don't even mean anything anymore. Uh, just huge numbers. And, okay? So let's take, okay, we don't trade stocks. We trade futures. We trade one particular future, which is called the Dow e -minis. It follows the Dow. Uh, the Dow is simply the total of the 100 top stocks in the stock market. So this is, it's very volatile, it goes up and down a lot. Like just the other day, what was it? Went like a total of 600 points, up 650 points or something. And on our uh, security, each point is worth $5. So let's say that you were totally uh, able to read the future and you knew that it was going to go up 650 points. And you bought just at the right time at the bottom, and you followed it all the way to the top, and then you sold. Huh? How much money would you get? What, 600 times 5? 
$3,000 per contract. $3,000. Okay? $3,000 per contract for a whole day of activity. No? But now consider this. In every hour, there are 61 minute bars. And let's say it's a quiet day, and each bar has 10 points of movement. Uh -huh. And let's say that, okay, so in one hour, 60 bars, 10 points, how many points is that? Think now. <laughs> Don't strain yourselves. 60 times 10? 600. 600 points. Times five dollars? Three. Three thousand dollars. In other words, 